Welcome in back. So last time I covered the world tree and its relation to time, so today I figured we should have a break and cover a nice and extremely simple topic. The Norse concept of luck. Okay, so maybe it's a little bit of a hyperbolic statement to say that this is easy. But I also think it is not as complicated as it tends to be made out to be. See, from what we can tell, the concept of luck in Old Norse wasn't a single word known as luck, but was understood as a group of words, each one referring to a different aspect of what we would call luck. In fact, I would think the most difficult part of understanding the Old Norse concept of luck might stem from our concept that luck is something that occurs because of coincidence. In fact, in Old Norse, this is not what is meant by luck at all. Rather, it was thought of as a quality inherent in a person and their lineage. Kind of like intelligence, strength, and in Old Norse culture, you could also see it in like when you were born into wealth or something like that. So, what precisely does it look like? Well, it expresses itself in terms of skill, beauty, and basically an event shaping themselves in a manner that is within the wishes of the lucky person. Concrete examples are as easy as someone who takes up drawing easier than others, or someone who easily gets like cooking way better than others. Which implies another thing, that is, different people possess luck to different degrees. And luck can actually in fact be diminished or lost or even sent over to another person to aid them. Now here is the tricky bit. Luck could also in a sense be external, even to the point of being an independent entity with its own will. But before going into this, let's start with an overview of the basic terms in Old Norse for luck. The first two terms are Geva and Gita. This refers to the inherent luck a person possesses within themselves. Both words seem to have come from the word gift, meaning gift, and this is a form of luck which can be sent to other people to help them out. My guess is, is that this luck is given by initially the Nornir, although our sources aren't really clear on this map. Next one is hail. This is similar to the term above, but also has the idea of an omen of good luck. And, in fact, this may be familiar to many heathens as, like, an expression to be said as a greeting, and it can also mean, like, healthy, because, you know, good luck, health. Then we get to the word hop, which denotes luck, but with the possible connotation of lucky action. Then we get to the haminya, which is actually pretty complicated. It's luck as an aspect of one's personality, which may, be take, which may take a form and be sent forth. And last but not least, we have the furgya. Now, there are two types of furgia, there's the animal furgia and the furgiu kolna. The animal furgia is an animal doppelganger, which is an expression of the person themselves. They have no independent will, and it is considered bad luck to see one's furgia dead. Unlike another furgia, the furgiu kolna. The furgiu kolna, on the other hand, is an independent goddess, sort of like a Norn, in my opinion, who passes herself down the family line and has a will of her own, which of course means that I'm going to presume that the Fugyu Kona operates similarly to how we do, in the sense of sending out her Haminya, given that she is her own independent spirit. As one can see, there are a wide range of terms for luck, but they can all be put on a range of internal luck to external. The more precise aspects of the former will be addressed later when I talk about the soul and heavenry. So what does it mean to be luckless? And how can one lose it? Well, the simple answer is most likely a concept called Neith. For those who are more fluent in Old Norse, this should bring to mind the term Neithinger. And while there isn't any, so to say, direct link, it is very likely that the two terms are related. That is, a Neithinger is someone who does a lot of Neith or Neithingsverk. That is, the work of a Neithinger. Now, here is the thing, we must be careful to distinguish the concepts of lucklessness and of being a Neithinger, as there are several heroes in the sagas who are luckless, yet are far from Neithinger, such as Grettir. There does, however, seem, though, to be the consistent theme of a Neithinger being luckless, and this ties into Neith, which is a Neithinger is someone who does Neith, and so to do Neith is to decrease your luck. As for the other sources of lucklessness, there are external forms, such as Seder, character flaws, oath-breaking, and pretty much anything Old Norse society looked down upon. 
which naturally brings us to the problematic concept as far as revivalism is concerned, the idea of Ergi and Arger. These two unfortunate aspects of Viking society are better talked about when discussing the notion of Dringer. As for now, I hope I've simplified a complex topic for you, and I hope to see you in the next.